Okay, different kind of problem. Given A, B, C, A, B, C is isosceles, meaning that A, B is congruent to uh, A, C. Okay? Given circles P and circle Q, right? And you're also given that BC is parallel to PQ. Let's see, BC is parallel to PQ. So these two long lines at the base of the isosceles here are parallel. So we can draw little parallel arrows there. All right, now we have to prove that these two circles are congruent. Now, this personal irritation for me as a tutor, kids always want to draw a perfect little drawing, and then they always want to make their little, uh, you know, your little logic diagram here, right, with the statements, statements and reasons, right? Um, and then they always love to put down all the blah, 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 blah for number one, and it's all the givens. All right, if that is the way that you're doing geometry and you're having a problem, I can tell you that is part of your problem. Do not write down all the givens at first. Sometimes some of the givens can come later, all right? What you need to do first is develop your argument. You're trying to prove that P and Q are congruent, right? Well, remember what I talked about in the intro. Circles are congruent if their radii are congruent. So in a problem like this, a multi-step problem, why don't we think backwards? So the goal is to try to get this radii to be congruent to this radii, right? So we want this to be congruent to that. And what I see here is an isosceles triangle up top. So how do you think this is going to go down? Well, we know that A, B, A, C are congruent, right? It's not going to be hard to prove that AP and AQ are congruent, right? AP, this whole bit here, and AQ, right? And then all we have to do is subtract this bit to get that these are congruent. And once we have that those are congruent, of course, by definition, circles with congruent radii are congruent circles. So you see, I figured it out before writing my little chart. Now, for your edification, I'll tell you what to put in the chart. First thing you do is, in this case, you do put in the givens. You put in that ABC is isosceles with AB being congruent to AC. That's given. Your next statement is that you have circles P and Q, and that this one is congruent to this one. And that's also given. Okay? Next, you're going to go for a little... Uh, corresponding angles, right? So you're going to get that angle ABC is congruent to P, ABC is congruent to APQ. Congruent, right? Why? Well, parallel lines. These are the corresponding angles. If you think of it like a quadrant, I think, well, they're in the upper right-hand corner, right? There's an upper right-hand corner angle, upper right-hand corner angle. So corresponding angles are congruent if you have parallel lines. And the same deal goes for here. So you can save time and put this is congruent to this and this is congruent to this in the same statement because it's the same reason. Parallel lines give you corresponding angles that are congruent. The next step is to state that ABC, this angle here, is congruent to a, C, B, this angle here. Why? It's a nice isosceles triangle, right? If sides and angles. Some teachers, you don't even have to say that. And then you say that P is congruent to Q. Why? Transitive property. Okay, then we have that A, P is congruent to A, Q. A, P is congruent to A, Q. Why? Because if sides, excuse me, if angles, then sides, and then, like what I said before, when you subtract uh, AB from AP, you get this bit. And if you subtract AC from AQ, you get this bit. 
So therefore, your statement is PB is congruent to QC, <clears throat> subtraction, and uh, finally, these two circles are congruent because circles with congruent radii are congruent by definition.